personal branding in real estate is all about showing who you are as a professional and how you provide true value to your customers. Jason Roach, principal of Century 21 in Linfield, has some amazing insights into how customer relationships are defined by how genuine agents present themselves. You guys should check it out. Jason Roach, thanks for joining PropTech Couple as well. No worries. Thanks for having me, Trent. Great to be here. You've got an interesting story. How'd you get into real estate? Yeah, so I was in banking for 20 years, um, working, uh, worked for Macquarie Bank for a long time. Mm -hmm. Had a great time there and learned a heap. And then uh, moved to Westpac. And then most of my banking career, though, was banking small businesses. Yep. And predominantly banking real estate businesses. So I spent a long time as a service provider to real estate agents and got to know them very well. And um, uh, I saw what you could do when you, you know, sort of, what you can create by owning your own business. And I always aspired to do that. Then an opportunity came up to, um, to leave the bank and bite the bullet and start a business and um, that was about four years ago. Yep. Um, and I love it. It's hard work, but I love it. Yeah, it's really, it's, it's, uh, it's very rewarding. Century 21, such a yep. massive brand, everybody knows sure. it. What, yeah. was the, what was the big attraction to, to join Century 21? Oh, so I'd known, um, so through my banking career, I've got to know all the brands and franchises and, and groups and that sort of thing. And um, I had a relationship with Charles, mm -hmm. Charles Tarby, who, yep. who owns the network, and yep. um, he'd been a great supporter of mine, both professionally and personally. Um, and uh, I was working for a business locally here for as a, just as a sales guy. I just got on the tools as a sales guy, and was working for Century, a Century Twenty One office. And then that office they sold themselves to someone else and dropped the Century Twenty One brand. And yeah. opportunity jumped up, so I um, I picked up the phone and called C Twenty One, and that was three years ago this month. So it's kind of cool. Interesting story. So how many offices you got at the moment? How many staff you got there? So we're based in Linfield in Sydney on the North Shore, sort of middle North Shore of Sydney. Yep. Uh, there's a team of about 10 of us. Yep. Um, mostly sales focus, trying to build the rent roll. Um, and that's going that's going pretty good actually. It's probably going faster than I, than I thought it would. Yep. Um, we sort of predominantly focus sort of our sweet spots, probably, you know, houses to sort of two to four million mm -hmm. type thing. And apartments probably eight hundred to two million. It's yeah. a lot. A lot of people, especially your, your sales guys, uh, they see you as a bit of a mentor. But you would have had a few mentors along the way in your career. Sure. What do you? Do you still reach out to, to your mentors? And uh, I, I guess what do you, what have you learned along the way? Oh, look, yeah. For, so through my, through, I don't, you know, I was lucky enough. I had a, I had a quite a, a, a fortunate career mm -hmm. through banking. Learned a lot of how to do things. Had a lot to do things as well. So. You know, some of my sort of mentors are from different brands. Some of them are real estate businesses. Um, Charles, as I mentioned, he's been a pretty good friend of mine. Um, Charles Tarby. Yep. Some of my friends own businesses, mm -hmm. so completely different businesses, and they've been good sounding boards. Um, but I do, I do try and stay in contact with them because most small businesses they share the same sort of problems. Yeah. You know, in terms of and a problem problem shared is a problem halved, as they say. So. Um, being, being networked with other business owners is, is pretty important and it sort of helps keep me sane at the same time. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. What are you specifically looking for in, in, a, in a person? Is there a, a couple of qualities that mm. you really try and, let's say you speak to somebody in a coffee shop and you, things are going good or things have not gone good. Yep. What are you, what, what's the, what are a couple of things you're looking for? Oh, look, I've got to trust them, Trent. Yep. You know, at the end of the day, it's my name over the door. Um, and you know we spend anywhere from eight to eighteen hours a day in the office for working, and I've got to like them and I've got to trust them. Yeah. I assume they can put a transaction together. Mm -hmm. You know, I assume that's like putting your underpants on. You know, so they've got to be able to be confident, but I've got to trust them, and they've got to have a bit of a sense of humour yep. and show some resilience and be ready to be ready to throw a few punches if they have to, and not just roll over because working in real estate, it's long hours. Certainly, good rewards there if you're ready to be patient and invest in yourself. But yep. um, having the right team member, you know, having the sorry, having the wrong team member in the right team can make can wreck a team real quick. Uh, four years four years ago when he started, you know, Sydney was booming. Yeah, um, yeah, sure. The market's definitely changed a lot the last six months to well, six to twelve months anyway. How are you seeing the market at the moment, and what are you looking kind of next six to twelve months? Look, I think the market's shifting. So I haven't worked through this sort of cycle before. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've only entered the industry in the last few years. I've only worked through a pretty bullish, a pretty bullish cycle. So um, I see things flattening out. I see um, 
I see credit conditions continuing to stay tight. I don't think they're going to keep tightening, but I think it's going to stay tight. Um, I think, you know, as we come into the end of this year, the banks are now more comfortable with what they can and can't do. And so are mortgage brokers, and so that so the consumer is more and more comfortable with what the bank will and won't lend them. Um, but it's been a leveler, you know. Property prices can't keep growing at double digit, yep. infinitely. So, um, in a practical sense, you know, we've been, you know, communication is probably more, more and more a requirement of a of a successful agency, um, and that's a working practice every day because everybody's expectation. Every landlord, every seller, every buyer, every tenant has a different expectation based on the service levels they receive. Their expectation is based on the last best experience they had. Yep. And maybe that's through a global brand, maybe it's a tech company they've worked with or worked for, an Apple or a Google or something like that. Mm -hmm. But everybody's expectation is different. So um, it's about understanding what are the expectations of the client that you're serving and then how do we how do we match that to what the marketplace is willing to to bear yeah. in a pricing sense or yep. a, or some other sort of way? Just touching on tech, um, obviously it's a bit of a flavour of the month, and sure. a lot of people are kind of talking about it. How, yeah. how do you guys use technology in your business, and, and how do you see that in the in the future? Yeah, so when I when I started the business, I had an IT guy come in and he said, "Oh, you need servers, and you need this, and you need that," and I'm like, "Servers." What? What's a server? <laughs> well, I didn't actually know what it was, and then he showed me what it was going to cost, and I thought, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. And so, you know, at its most basic form, we use uh, we use everything in the cloud, so so the staff can work from anywhere, and that's not particularly revolutionary, but it's certainly it, it shifted the dial for me in terms of what I could afford to do and what I couldn't afford to do when yeah. I first started the business. Um, speed of tech is probably influencing consumer behaviour. So whether they're ordering a car or ordering food or ordering um, an experience, everything happens at the touch of a button on a device or on a tablet. Um, and so that creates the expectation with the consumer experience. So more and more, our use of tech is based on how do we meet or exceed the needs of the consumer's experience, which is shaped on their use of tech. Does that make sense? Yep, Maybe gotcha. I'm not sure. Yep. Um, you know, we use the usual sort of devices and we use lots of smart applications and, you know, things like Soho and that sort of thing. It, it's smart. Like, it's just a really, it's a really easy way of reaching, reaching the consumer because the consumer is distracted by tech as well. Yeah, sure. You know, I can't remember the stats on the time that people spend on social, be it on Facebook or Insta or Snap or, um, you know, anything, Pinterest or anything else that's going on, but I know how I use it. You yep. know, I spend a bit of time on it, but we spend time on it too as different ways of communicating. But when we're trying to sell a property or lease a property, we're trying to get into the window of the consumer, the, you know, how many minutes or hours a day they, they provide themselves to access um, their, their domain, if you like, for what they're looking for. Yeah. Right, so Facebook, you can spend hours on Facebook just meandering around the internet and yep. finding interesting things that are completely irrelevant to yeah. So it's using tech in a way that engages with the consumer so they are, they'll click on me and then maybe they'll call me. Yep. I guess real estate's a pretty serious game. You know, we're dealing with uh, you know, million dollar properties and there's tens yep. of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars of, of commission on the line, I guess every, every transaction. Yeah. How do you guys have fun though? Keep it clean. Oh, no, no, no. The video's <laughs> running, so oh look, we um, I mix it up every now and then. I do some bit, sometimes I do some weird stuff in the office. Yep. So we meet twice a week in the office. I use a rhythm that I learn at Westpac. You know, Friday morning, Monday morning, short, sharp, 25, 30 minute meetings. No long sales meetings and no boring stuff, right? Yeah. So sometimes people, the team will come in the morning on a Friday morning. I'll get in there early, and I'll just have the crack the stereo cranking the, as loud as I can get it. Nice. And maybe it's something really loud and crazy. Maybe it's the red hot chili peppers screaming at them, and that wakes people up. Yeah. But you know what? Guess what they do? They smile. Yep. And not everybody walk, smiles when they walk in the door of of work. So. Yeah. You know, we we catch up now and then. We're, like my team's still pretty young, in terms of sort of gelling, and I've I've hired for. I've, I've hired a lot for attitude and, and sort of secondary for skill because I can te teach skill. I can provide it, I can coach the coachable, but you know, we catch up for a drink next door at the, with a great Italian restaurant next to us, Marciano's in Linfield. So yep. um, that always keeps us pretty happy. Um, 
you know, we go to functions and that's, you know, some try and get out, try, I think training sometimes, you can go to training, like it doesn't sound like fun, yeah. but it mixes the day up. And I guess fun in a, in a work environment is also about trying, you know, keep engaged with, with your staff. So they will give me a little bit extra and they will go to a listing presentation at seven o'clock on a Saturday night. Yep. You know, that sort of thing. But yep. we have a few laughs and maybe I'll tell you some of those things off camera about <laughs> yeah, sure. the things that... Jason Roach, thank you very much for joining Prompto Couple. So no worries, Trent. Thanks cheers. for having me. Thanks. See you later. Bye-bye.